There's a lot of hype with this El Nino being pretty extreme. Every single week I was going to Jaws, and every time I was leaving Jaws, there was another swell in the map. The wave I caught in the morning before the Jaws event started was definitely a special wave for me. I kind of thought I was in the perfect spot exactly, and, and I was a few strokes a little bit too far out than I really would like to be. And so when I stood up, I tried to get an edge in. I tried to get my rail in the water and start knifing it. And the wind picked my board up and just kind of brought it sideways, and, and that caused me to have a big giant airdrop. And it was a very, uh, dramatic drop, and that wave was definitely a standout wave for me. There is a lot of parallels between hunting animals or fish and the wave, because the first time you may come across or, or see something, you might not have been prepared. There's waves that I've seen break that have just been mind-blowing, but it just wasn't the right place and time. With my experience and the way I've seen things evolved, I know I'm like physically and mentally prepared to fully capitalize when I see these, these beasts come back, but it's just waiting for it to happen. And historically, these El Ninos have kicked in, not you know, when we think of our traditional beginning to winter, but actually right around New Year's, that's exactly what happened. The last like basically six weeks or two months has been pretty insane, and all of January was probably the best January I've ever seen. I've never seen like this consistent of a month of big wave surf, I don't think, in my life. At least not since I've been chasing. We saw that swell pretty far out for Jaws, and you see on the long range such a large swell with such a good uh, wind forecast. Knew something special was gonna happen, definitely. I can't remember seeing a storm with wave heights this strong that far south and east in the northern hemisphere, so what we really need to worry about is Jaws this evening. Jaws for 15 years since since I towed it back in the day the first time and uh, I don't remember a day that was that big and that glassy ever in the last 15 years.
Well, after the last Jaws swell, I just got super run down from being in the water and surfing all day long. And then I got that flu that was going around. I was sick going to Mavericks. Literally, if I was gonna create the best day at Mavericks I could ever ask for, it would be that day. Offshore, on the ledge, you know, 20 feet solid, some bigger ones, a lot of un, like pretty much unrideable waves coming in. And then as the tide dropped later and the swells filling in even more, there's waves breaking way outside on the outer ledge to where you could conceivably get a chip shot into something crazy. And that's like ultimate Mavericks to me, that's full spectrum. That's when I was like, okay, it's best day at Mavericks ever. It's done, it's official. It was insane. And you know, it took me a, a little while to get warmed up. I was just feeling off because I was sick and I had a real slow start, but then I just started having fun and catching a lot of waves. In the last 40 years, we've had four El Ninos. And if you love surfing big waves, in your window of like performing at your top, you know, you're super lucky if you actually get a, a real strong El Nino in that time. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was like, it was a little bit of a perfect storm. It happened at the exact time in my life where I could really not only appreciate it, but like maximize my own potential. And it really stands out because not only did it happen, but it actually like lived up to the hype and then some. I think it'll go down in history as one of the greatest seasons ever, you know? I was not sad to see it come to an end at all. <laughs> I needed a break, you know? I'm stoked, I got my fill for a little while. I got to, you know, try different things with my surfing. I know where I wanna go from, from here as far as board design and also um, approach. And I'm excited to focus on a few other things and wait for that hunger to really come back and kick in for the Southern Hemisphere.